Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you here on this beautiful morning. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as John plays his prelude. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship found in this morning's worship guide. Rejoice, Jesus is in our midst. Feed us, Jesus, Jesus, and fill us us with with hope. hope. Be glad, friends, Jesus has bread and fish to spare. Free us, Jesus, from the pursuit of food that does not satisfy. Sing for joy, people of God. God gathers up the pieces of our lives that nothing may be lost. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Let us join our hearts and our voices in prayer together as we pray. We We praise praise you, O God, for the the meaning meaning that you give to our lives in and through Jesus. He is the sign of your deep and everlasting love for the world and we rejoice in his promise to sustain us with his life. We praise you for filling our emptiness with his goodness. May our worship and praise express our thanks, O God, for your gift to us of the true bread from heaven, Jesus Christ, your Son, 
our living Lord. Amen. Please rise now in body or in spirit after the organ introduction to join in the singing of hymn number 487, When Morning Gilds the Skies. You may be seated. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God in confidence. Please join me in the prayer of confession, followed by a time for silent prayer. Let us pray. Forgive us when we see the sins of others, but are unable to see our own. Lead us in this moment to the places where we fall short of your ways, where our lives point away from your light. As these things fill our minds, call us back to right paths, back to godly ways. May we know your love which leads us to repentance. May we know your power, which helps us break free from unhealthy cycles of behavior. May we know your invitation to shine your beauty into our world. We recommit ourselves to you and your ways. Accept these, the prayers of our hearts, both spoken and unspoken, which we offer in the strong name of Jesus Christ our Lord, and let all the people say, Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. 
The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Let us rise in body or in spirit to sing the Gloria Patri. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us share signs of reconciliation and peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also also with you. Thank you. Please greet one another with the peace of Christ. We can, uh, we can save the rest for coffee hour. As we prepare our hearts and minds to listen for God's word, let us ask God's spirit to guide us in our understanding of what is read and proclaimed. Please join me now in the prayer for illumination as together we pray. Since we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth, Make Make us hunger hunger for this heavenly food, that that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. We may think that stories of miraculous feeding of multitudes only occur in the New Testament, but we need only recall a time of the Exodus and the gift of manna and quail to remember that this isn't so. We also have this story from the time of the prophet Elisha. Listen for God's word as it comes to us from 2 Kings chapter 4. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So Elisha repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He set it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Our response of reading this morning is from Psalm 145. Let us share in God's word. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They They shall shall speak of the glory glory of your your kingdom kingdom and tell of your power. To make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your Your kingdom kingdom is an everlasting everlasting kingdom kingdom, and and your your dominion dominion endures endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful faithful in his his words and and gracious in in his deeds. deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes eyes of all look look to you and you give them their food in due season. 
You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord, the Lord is, is just, just in, in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Thank you, Mike. Our New Testament lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 6. Continue to listen for the word of the Lord. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for already he had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than a half year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place. And they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. And when they'd all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After this, people saw the signs, and after they saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew to a mountain by himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. Well, there's three theories about this miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. First, everyone had some food tucked away somewhere in a pocket or a bag. And as they saw the generosity of a little boy with his five loaves and two fishes, they added their food to the baskets. That's great. And they had 12 baskets left over. The second theory is that seeing only five loaves and two fishes, the people took the smallest bites possible so that there was enough for everyone. But that doesn't explain the 12 baskets filled after the, they ate. Third possibility. This is truly a miracle. Jesus blessed the, le the meager lunch of a little boy and the food was multiplied until everyone had enough. Everyone was satisfied, and there were lots of leftovers for another meal. I like this third possibility the best. It speaks to us of God's abundance and grace. Everyone will have enough. When our son Adam was about 12, 13 years old, we were living in Fargo. It was the last time David and I co-pastored. We co-pastored a new church development. Um, I was picking him up from a violin lesson in the north part of Fargo. We lived in the south part. And he got in the car and he looked at me and said, Mom, what's for dinner? Now, I'd been teaching all day. David and I were both adjunct faculty in the music department at Concordia College. I had no clue what was for dinner. Well, what would you like, Adam? Do you really want to know? Yes, what would you like for dinner? He said, Mom, I want to be full. Aren't you getting enough to eat? No, Mom, I'm hungry all the time. 
When we got home, I talked to David about it. We didn't go out to eat very much. There wasn't a lot of extra money in the budget. But we went to Ponderosa. Adam had a steak, two or three platters of food, and then he ate everything else that was on the table. And when we were done, I said, are you full, Adam? For now, yes. <laughs> As I said, he was 12, 13 years old, going through puberty. He grew eight inches in six months, got Osgood Schlatter's disease in both knees, if you know what that is. It happens when you grow too fast and your knees hurt. But we also realized we were blessed to be able to get him enough food so he could be full. I always believe that we are the recipients of God's abundance, and I try not to take that for granted. A few years ago, I did a Google search for Christian abundance, and I was told there were 765,204 entries. And I found some wonderful meditations and comments about spiritual abundance, the need to focus on blessings rather than material possessions. I also found some very interesting and disturbing sites, most about prosperity gospels. It's clear that the idea of abundance means different things to different people. For David and I, as parents of a growing boy who simply wanted to be full, Abundance meant being able to feed him. For the weary crowd that followed Jesus, abundance meant bread, fish, and so much, much more. The crowd that followed Jesus wasn't expected. When Matthew tells this story, he begins before the feeding of the 5,000 with the story of the beheading of John the Baptist and then writes this, now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds followed him anyway. They came, grasping at the hope that the rumors and the stories they had heard were true, that Jesus was able to heal, that he would tell stories that gave hope and encouraged people for the living of every day. They left their work, their crops, their flocks, their shops, packed up their children and started walking. They walked over hills in heat beating down, dust all around, and they found him. And Jesus had compassion upon them. He cured the sick, and you know he told stories that gave them hope. All day in the heat without letting up, people came and listened and were healed and they lingered, not wanting the day to end. No fast food stands, no vendors, no drinking fountains along the way. Surely some of them brought provisions. At least we know there were five loaves and two fishes. But soon the immense crowd became restless. It, you notice that the text in John says 5,000 men. It is speculated that only the men were counted, which was very usual but with the women and children much closer to 10,000. They were hungry, hot, and thirsty. And the disciples are not in much better shape. They just wanted the crowd to disappear. Send them away. We don't want to deal with hungry people. We don't have any money. We don't have any food. We don't want to be bothered. But Jesus responds, they do not need to go away. You need to give them something to eat. Then he simply blessed the food the disciples had collected and brought to him, five loaves, two fish, and set the food apart as holy food for hungry people. And there's enough. Everyone will be full. As overwhelming as the issue of hunger is and continues to be, it will not go away. No matter what kind of huge global political and economic policies are there, the hungry will still be hungry. And food will still need to be blessed and given. You give them something to eat. 
Those words come to us as well as to the disciples who were there. I like to think of the crowd slowly realizing what was happening and with amazement and hope join in serving one another. I like to think of the crowd looking around, finding others who are hungry and thirsty and sharing food with each other. I like to think that the crowd and the disciples began to understand that even a few loaves and fish could become the foundation of a great banquet. Do we understand this miracle? Not really. I don't know how he did it. Just when we think that we can do no more, Jesus reminds us, even commands us, you give them something to eat. Whatever we have, how little we have, how insignificant we think our gifts may be, it is enough for Jesus to bless and make holy. When we feed a hungry neighbor, we are standing firm on the promise of God that all shall be fed, all will be invited to the banquet, all will have enough, and we will all be full. And that's good news. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and sing hymn number 521, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart. And we're going to sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. Let us stand. Join our voices together in the affirmation of faith. 
which is also found in this morning's worship guide. And so together we say, as followers of Jesus Christ, we declare with joy and trust our world belongs to God. From the beginning until his kingdom fully comes, God keeps covenant forever. Our world belongs to him. We rejoice in the goodness of God, renounce the works of darkness, and dedicate ourselves to holy living. As covenant partners called to faithful obedience and set free for joyful praise, we offer our hearts and lives to do God's work in his world. With tempered impatience, eager to see injustice ended, we expect the day of the Lord, and we are confident that the light which shines in the present darkness will fill the earth when Christ appears. Come, Lord Jesus, our world belongs to you. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. The number of announcements printed in the worship guide. I hope you've had a chance to take a look at those. Um, in those, I'll just highlight a few. Um, summer refreshments are not being handled by any particular group. There is a sign-up sheet over there. Grateful to the Apillos for filling in today. Thank you so much for that. I'm sorry, was there? A, I didn't read lips. What, what did you say, Karen? Missed that. Anyhow, it's over there. Hope you will join us over there and continue what started off as wonderful welcoming and all that stuff that happened earlier in the service today. Another announcement would be with regard to uh, special summer music. Grateful that some have uh, taken part in that. Next Sunday, um, we have the uh, joy of having all our children here, and they'll be providing some special music that day. Um, but there are still uh, choice dates throughout the summer, so if you'd like to share your gifts, please let that be known. Are there any other special announcements that I have uh, missed? Yes, Mike. Yes, indeed. They're doing great work. Appreciate that. As we come to a time of morning prayer, let's take note of some prayer concerns that have come uh, forward both on the Facebook page and then also as you've entered the sanctuary this morning. Patty is asking for prayers for boots for good biopsy results. Mike's asking us to remember Paul and John and Connie. Lisa would have us pray for Bobby and for May. Jeffrey is asking for our prayers for the family and friends of Cindy Jones, who passed away after a battle with cancer, that she will find peace. In our faith, we're confident that she has found peace, peace with the Lord. And so we pray for all those who are continuing in various um, areas of concern for health needs and other, other aspects of their lives. Prayers for Angelo, who is currently hospitalized and battling an infection. And these additional prayers for Kenny, for Valerie, for Sarah, who is currently in the care of hospice, for Barbara, again, for all those dealing with cancer, and for Robin. It's always the case that those prayer concerns always they just touch the surface of the things that are weighing upon our hearts or maybe lifting us up because of the joy they cause. Whatever it may be, let us bring those things before the Lord first in a time of silent prayer and then we'll join together in the pastoral prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray.
Holy One, the psalmist reminds us that the eyes of all wait upon you and that you do give them their needs in due season. You open your hands and you satisfy the desires of every living thing. We count ourselves among those living things. We pray that our desires might be met, O God. We lift up our prayers first of all in thanksgiving for the many ways known to us and often unknown that you have done so much more than just meet our needs. You've given us life and given it to us in abundance. And we thank you for that. So this day, O oh God, we lift up our prayers in so many different areas of our lives. We pray for our, our country and for its leaders during this time of um, gathering up toward an election and all that goes along with that. We pray for civility and for understanding, for depth of knowledge and for the ability to express oneself clearly and succinctly in a way that, that captures the hearts and minds of others in a way that we believe moves us forward as a country and that we may continue to be an important voice in the world's community. And we lift up our voice today, O oh God, asking that you might also be with our neighbors in countries worldwide. We grieve along with those who are laying to rest loved ones killed in rocket attacks and other acts of war. We grieve with those who are not finding enough abundance and are laying to rest loved ones who have died of malnutrition and starvation, of disease, and of all the things that affect us as part of the human family. Redouble our commitment, O oh God, to be those who share abundance with others, that our compassion may not be deadened, that we might continue to do the things you call us to do, confident that you are able to do more than we might ask or imagine. This day, O oh God, we're thinking of those who have been training for so long and now are sharing their, their gifts and their abilities and their skills with the Olympic Games. We pray for, for health and strength for all, for enjoyment and excitement, for all the things that these events bring as people gather together to celebrate the skills and the gifts and graces of many. This day, O oh God, we pray for your church, wherever it may be, that it may continue to be a witness to your abundance, that it can, may continue to be a place of welcome for those who are weary, looking for sanctuary, that it may be a place as well for those who are well-rested, and looking for a place from which to grow and to, to serve with faith, hope, and love, following in the steps of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As the scriptures remind us, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and all those who live in it. So let us return to God the offerings of our lives, as well as the gifts of the earth. I invite the ushers to come forward. Those worshiping with us on the live stream are welcome to take note of the various ways in which you can express your generosity as they are placed in the worship guide for this morning's service.
Please join me in our prayer as together we pray. Dear Lord, we give back to you in thankfulness what you have given to us in kindness. We acknowledge that the world and its resources are not ours, but yours, and that you have put us in charge as your stewards. Help us to exercise responsibly the authority you give us in your world. Let Jesus, your Son, be the teacher for all our dealings with one another and with the rest of creation. Bless the gifts we now present back to you, so that they may be used in the work of your kingdom on this earth. Amen. Friends, I invite you to remain standing as we continue our praise with hymn number 332, Live Into Hope. hungry, not only for bread and fish, but for hope, for love, for compassion. Feed them. We are called to feed one another. And so may the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.
Yeah.